three. Yeah. So welcome to our live uh, video chat from lived experiences to leaders, leading families through incarceration. Um, we believe that in faith-based ministry, we need to pay attention to developing leaders within the ranks of those we serve. You know, Jesus developed leaders who changed the world, and so can we. And today I am so excited to have with us two special guests from Faith Freedom Life mm -hmm. um, in Cincinnati, um, Michelle Smith Lewis and Barb Vote. And so we are just excited to have you ladies with us. If you don't know um, what Faith Freedom Life is, it is a uh, grassroots nonprofit organization that Michelle um, founded uh, and came out of her own experience of having an incarcerated loved one. And it is there to support families mm -hmm. through that experience all the way back into re-entry and to just restore hope and just provide that healing that is so incredibly important and for family reunification and reintegration. So I'm just gonna do a brief introduction of each of our guest speakers and then I'm gonna allow them to speak a little more about uh, their own experiences and introduce themselves from that perspective. And then we'll do a guided discussion and then open it up for questions. So thank you for joining us today. Um, so Michelle Smith Lewis is both the founder, as I mentioned, and I would call her after a conversation with her this week, chief visionary and role model mm -hmm. for faith, freedom, life. Um, and so she comes at this again, as I mentioned, from her own um, incarceration experience with a loved one. And she was thrust into it unexpectedly and is continuing to learn day by day, which makes her, um, I think, the chief role model. And her goal is to share experiences and information to make this process easier for other families as they go through it. Um, she is a supporter and encourager, comforter, advisor, and giver to people in times of crisis. And she is dedicated to serving families in need of hope and committed to seeing families healed and restored during and after the incarceration of a loved one. She is a wife, a mother, and Mimi to three beautiful granddaughters. She has over 25 years of experience in the legal field and currently works as a senior legal executive assistant and is an, o an Ohio State Bar Association certified paralegal. And she dreams of traveling to different countries and loves the beach, um, music and art. And so what, what a beautiful uh, capsulation of who Michelle is. And I can't wait for you to really see her and meet her um, in her personality. She's a woman of faith. She's a sister of the Christ most high. And um, we are just thrilled to have her with us. And then Barb vote is, um, I call myself an FOB, a friend of Barb. And <laughs> Barb, <laughs> Barb previously served eight years with Kairos Prison Ministry during her own son's incarceration, and she understands the injustices of the criminal justice system, financial burdens for families that are left behind, and community acceptance difficulties. I love that, the way you describe that, Barb. She also understands the effects of addiction on families and the hardships grandparents face while raising grandchildren, as she previously did with her son's incarceration. She previously formed and led a Life Builders mentoring team through the United Methodist Church at Westwood United Methodist and ODRC at the Dayton Correctional Institution, and we hope that she'll get back to doing that sometime soon. Um, and this team is, it's a mentoring, it's a structured mentoring program, but Barb always brings that faith perspective in there. And she is just by nature and, uh, and Michelle, when we had our conversation earlier this week, um, just talked, it, she gets it. She, Barb is just one of those saints among us. And so I am just so happy to share, uh, have her share herself with you today as well. So welcome you both. Um, it is fun to be doing this with you. And um, so we've heard your official kind of bios, um, but can you expand on that a little bit? Just tell us a little bit more about um, who you are based, not based on, but how your own experiences with the justice system has, has helped shape who you are now as a leader 
um, among others that are going through this experience. So I, Michelle, I, am, I truly invite you to share um, a little bit more about yourself and then Barb you. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a, really an honor to be able to um, speak today. So um, as it pertains to uh, my experiences um, that have turned into leadership, um, I, I guess I would have to start by saying that it was a call. Um, I really wanted to um, provide families uh, the support that I needed and still need. Um, mm -hmm. And I should also mention that none of this is by choice. It definitely is something that I'm called to do that is just so deeply um, ingrained in my heart. I wouldn't, any, you couldn't have paid me any amount of money on the planet to uh, make me believe that I would be here right now doing this work, but there is nothing more uh, more that I'd rather do. There really isn't. Um, so as it pertains to leadership, um, for me, it is just being a servant and um, being present, which for me goes um, beyond being available. Uh, being present with everybody that we encounter in every moment to help them along the journey. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> so um, that's me and, and the, personal, uh, the personal side of me um, on my downtime, um, as you mentioned, um, I love the beach. I'm gonna be at the beach next week. Thank God, I'm gonna see some sand. Um, and I love spending time with my granddaughters. Uh, they bring me so much joy and considering what I've been through um, and what we are going through being a family of the incarcerated and being a grandmother uh, is really kind of a chance for redemption um, mm -hmm. in terms of things that uh, in having a close relationship and walk with God, I'm able to talk to my granddaughters about or uh, instill in them, have my piece of instilling in them, maybe what I didn't know to or realize or recognize to instill in my kids when they were younger. So that part is so super cool. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. So Barb, a little bit more about you. Well, this has been such a long journey. And it began, of course, with my son being incarcerated. And I knew that I could not get into the prison, into the men's prison, to do any good for anybody. But I thought I just gave him over to God and said, you know, you're going to have to help here. I surrender everything to you. And then I would like to do something for the women if I can't do something for the men. So that's how it all started. And I went all through the Kairos business, Kairos on the outside, and I did one uh, group inside. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was with other women who um, were in the same situation, had loved ones inside. And um, we just worked on building up their, their confidence and their self-esteem and uh, just having a good time, lots of laughs and, and tears as well. But I uh, we did that for eight years. And uh, then I heard about the Life Builders through the church. And when that happened, it was definitely a call. And then I knew that I was in the right place. Because I've always, there's always been experiences where I knew I was in the right place at the right time. But this was really powerful. And so that's what started me on the, the journey for life builders. Now I used more or less everything that I had experienced through Kairos for one. And also I did a jail ministry class. So I used all of that together to form what I felt like life builders should be and brought a few people along with me and encouraged them and gave them responsibilities. And so they have been so appreciative of all of that. Um, 
it's just amazing. It's actually wonderful. So, but I did, I, I raised my grandchildren with the help of my partner and um, it's wonderful because we are very close. They were like second and third grade when we got them, maybe first, no second, I think. And then um, they're now graduating from high school. One graduated this year, one next year. And uh, yes, I know, it's wonderful. So um, they are so precious to me and they call me when they have a question or a concern or um, just to kind of bounce off ideas and so forth. So. They are terrific and I love them so much. And like Michelle said, you know, I've learned to be out, outward more with them, knowing what I know now, as opposed to what I knew when my son was growing up. So it's made a huge difference. And I want that for other people, you know, that we want to stop the uh, progress from childhood to prison pipeline. Yeah. Like yeah, the generational the, transfer, right? Yeah, exactly, yes. right. Yeah. And I think if more people understand that, you know, and maybe I was just a late bloomer that I <laughs> didn't know, but I was working while my son was was little. So that's what I blame it on. <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, I think both of you in, in both of your stories highlight a couple things about leadership is that you're learners. You're continuing mm -hmm. to learn. And I, I just... Um, personally, I don't think that you can be a leader without being a learner first, mm -hmm. right? And be willing to seek that out and then use what you learn, um, surface the wisdom that you've gained just from life, mm -hmm. right? To lead mm -hmm. others um, down a different, perhaps a different path. I mean, it's always the other person's choice, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that goes to Michelle's point about leadership is about presence, if people mm -hmm. don't feel that you're really for them, they're not going to listen to you and they're not yeah. going to take that wisdom and use it for something better. So um, thank you both for sharing, uh, sharing a little bit more about yourselves and being vulnerable about that and being vulnerable in this space. That's, that's part of the healing, uh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, through this yeah, whole yeah. thing is, is yeah. being able to tell our stories. And I tell people a lot in our work that you know some people are just called they're called outright to this population or to particular group within justice involved ministry um, but some people are called by circumstance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you both have been called by circumstance and and you have choices right when those circumstances occur you can push back against it or you can lean into it like Michelle was talking about and, and you were talking about Barb and um, you can lean into it. And what is, where is God leading me? And that's where the redemption of what is very painful can be very beautiful in the end. So um, thank you both for sharing on that. So I want to just kind of move into a very guided discussion. And these are some of the questions I ask all of our folks is, um, you know, in one or two word, in a one or two word sentence, right? One or two words. What is leadership to you? So, so I think um, that I mentioned that um, initially was um, leadership to me, first of all, is just being a servant um, and then being present. So, and I mentioned that it is uh, it goes beyond for me being available. It's just really being present with everybody that we encounter in that moment, um, being able to identify, um, being able to listen. Um, being a leader uh, to me is, boy, is listening and not really realizing earlier on my personal story um, of the fact that I just really wasn't a good listener when I thought I was, but uh, being able to listen and be present and serve. Mm -hmm. Well, brilliant. I think too, that's good. And I'm sorry that you didn't let, I didn't let you introduce me <laughs> or invite me, but I think that um, leadership is a mutual respect and so that we're on the same page, everybody needs to be able to listen to each other and learn from each other. And nobody is the head of anything. We all have equal responsibilities. We all have equal 
um, yeah, so that's where I think it, it is. Um, I'm sure there's more, but I agree with Michelle that it definitely is serving and listening to God and opening up that relationship more and sharing that with the others that helps and draw them in and also to um, tell their own stories, you know, mm -hmm. and open up. So, and mm -hmm. it's definitely important to include in your groups, people that have lived it also. And yes, and then to um, lead, you know, uh, shoot, can't think of my words, but um, encourage them to do better, do more, mm -hmm. go deeper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that that's so what you both said is so powerful. I recently read an article about the difference between fixing, helping, and serving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fixing and helping always have some kind of power dynamic to them. Okay. Right. And and to Barb's point um, of and your point, Michelle, of being present and mutual, mutual mutuality service it hits in those two things and uh, and, and that really happens through that listening that mm -hmm. Michelle talked about. And uh, I was on a, another session with a friend in Cleveland and she said, you know, if you really listen, you can hear, hear despair, mm -hmm. right? You can hear um, hopelessness, you can mm -hmm. hear um, just, or you can hear joy, you can hear peace but it really requires you to listen. And, and she mm -hmm. says that she tunes her ears to listen to the gaps. Mm, that's good. And yeah. And, and so I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, to listen when there's despair, I listen to what's the gap that that person that's causing that despair mm -hmm. for that person. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, then she's able to be pr more present. And so, um, and lead them in that way so beautiful the beautiful i love um i love what you both have highlighted for this so during your own experiences and and uh, michelle i know you're right and still in the right in the thick of it and everything when did you really s start to see yourself as a leader um it, it, based on your own definition of a leader um within that experience that's a really good question. So, you know, um, because, because I've needed so much support and want to uh, give support, I just, I still honestly struggle with the word leader. I just, I really don't see myself as that because I just serve people. Um, yeah, that's, that's a struggle for me, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't consciously think of, of, of myself as a leader, but as a servant. Um, and then again, Holy Spirit just really started dealing with me on what I wanted to see other people have because of what I needed, you know, like a deer in headlights. Um, and when uh, my loved one, when my son went inside, it just turned my world upside down. Um, I know uh, the support that I wanted, but didn't want to reach out to get it um, in those earlier days and weeks and months, uh, not wanting to come out of my house, um, you know, having your own family members want to be there for you, but not necessarily know how, um, mm -hmm. or even having the family members that didn't want to say anything to you because they didn't want to upset you and make you start crying. Um, so just all of those experiences and the road that I began to go down uh, in terms of my relationship with God and really became introspective, like, what is happening and why I need to get to the bottom of this. Um, and that turned into God showing me myself and wanting to be the change that I wanted to see in my family. 
Um, so that's really where it started for me. And as I began to move through my healing process, God opened up the door for me to want to help others. There's a, there was a study done at Harvard of the top business, the most successful business people in the world. And you know what the number one thing was, Michelle, that made them more successful? Self-awareness. That's good. Self-awareness. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, Look yeah. At that. Wow. Look at God, right? Look at God yeah. work with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. So Barb, when did you kind of start to see yourself? Well, I'm a person that needs to know everything. I need to, you know, I do. I need to, before I can speak of it, before I can do it, I need to know everything. So that's why I went through all the training that I did. And so it was working itself up. And I think it was Life Builders and the definite call that I had, it was powerful. And I knew that I had to obey. And I was glad to because I was very interested in doing it. Um, there was something else I was going to say, and now I've forgotten what it was. Um, oh, I know. It was in answer kind of to Michelle's situation with her family and being accepted in the community. Um, my son's deal was all over the news. So everybody was already informed. And so I just basically yeah. opened up and was comfortable with it so that other people could be comfortable with it too. Mm. So I had that instinct and it worked. Ever so many people came up to me and said, you know, I've experienced some of that too. Wow. And yeah, it was powerful. And so of course I kept all that in confidence, but um, sure. I, at least it helped me know that I had people out there that empathized and understood, you know, but, yeah. and I, I was really grateful. I guess it was God that led me to that because it was just, I couldn't fight it. I couldn't hide, you know, it was right. going to be gone for eight years. It wasn't like it was just a three month thing, even so, but oh, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to and, answer your question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are amazing. You're just amazing. <laughs> I just, uh, pearls of wisdom, just dropping them all over the place, all yeah. over the place. Um, so, uh, and we talked about this uh, earlier this week in that, uh, Michelle, you said that, you know, when you met Barb, that you just, it was almost, you had this connection, right? You had this kind of immediate yeah. connection with her and you just yeah. knew after one phone call um, with her, right? That there was something special about Barb. So what are, what, when you kind of reflect upon, you know, how she leads, which is different how you lead, which is phenomenal, but together is so powerful. Um, what are some of the characteristics that you see in Barb that maybe she doesn't see in herself and oh how she my leads people. Goodness. I let Miss Barb know all the time mm -hmm. that she is, first of all, she's more um, valuable than I think what she gives herself credit for. Um, her humility, her humility and um, meekness, but meekness, don't, don't misunderstand, very strong, very strong, but the humility um, and the willingness um, and the heart for this work and for people um, definitely drew me to her. And I have to let you know that she's, she's dubbed my second mom. That's what I've called her. And and what you were mentioning earlier is that we were connected. I asked a person, um, hey, I'm just getting started. Any connections, anybody you can loop me in with? And she thought of Miss Barb immediately. And we connected. And after one phone call, uh, Holy Spirit said to ask her to be a part of the team. And I'm like, I don't even know her. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? And so, but I was obedient and did it. And here we are. And it was 
one of the best decisions that I made for the organization. And that's, that's for real. Um, and she's just a sweetheart. So I would say her leadership style, <laughs> excuse me, style is the humbleness that comes along with what she does and the sweetness and how she talks to everybody. And um, it just extends a lot of grace mm -hmm. and, and love. Yeah, yeah. A lot of authenticity. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say for both of you, just tremendous authenticity you bring mm -hmm. immediately. Yes. You know you're for real, for real. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. You know for it's real, for real to get the second one. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> So Barb, what uh, what brought you to say yes to uh, to Michelle's invitation? What did you recognize in her that you're like, yeah, this is somebody that um, oh, I it was everything from I didn't have a clue who she was. I had gotten an email from someone who said, um, I'd like to introduce you to Michelle. And I'm sure that hers said the same thing. I'd like to introduce you to Barb. Um, it was a person that I really, I had met, but didn't feel like there was any connection or I really didn't spend time talking with her, you know, but um, whew, it was wonderful. We connected, Michelle and I connected immediately. And I think we were on the phone off and on all day and we shared so much of the same vision and, um, I, I feel like Michelle is a mini me. I feel like she's a younger me that, um, she, you know, she's still going through the throes of it. And I've been out of it for like maybe four or five years and have seen the result. It's still working on it, you know, but not so much as when he was in prison. But um, yeah, her personality and mine are so similar and, um, she has such great ideas and she's a powerful person. She really is. She's detail oriented. She, you know, we kick back and forth with ideas and um, she follows through. So that's good. <laughs> I don't so much like the follow through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, there's that authenticity and that, uh, that uh, just laying it out there. Yeah. Um, but, mm -hmm. but you have to have all right for your team. Yes. When you're yes. looking at teams and, and developing teams and, and you both know this, you look for certain characteristics, you look for certain things in, in individuals and um, whatever is needed for the team at that time. Because, you know, I, I think anybody can be a leader if they're in the right place, under mm -hmm. the right purpose, in the right call. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so, you know, as as, as a leader part for, for me, this is part of my leadership is how do I steward people well? And that all goes back to being in the right position with the right purpose and under the right call. So, um, and I see that in this dynamic with the both of you. Um, so when you, when you, the, the women and, or the family members, I don't, I should not assume they're all women that, that, are, that you work with within your organization or that are connected with your organization, but the people, the family members, um, when or how do you start to, to, to um, identify people who might, you might wanna move into a different position as, you know, as they heal, right? As they mature and as they get their feet under themselves and in this, this role, um, kind of what, what, what tips you off, so to speak. And sometimes it's just a gut reaction like you, you had in meeting each other. Um, but then sometimes it, it requires that stepping back and discerning a little bit, but just those little whispers from the Holy Spirit saying, there's more here. There's more here for this person, right? Um, so what are some of the things that maybe you kind of, that kind of come on your radar so, mm -hmm. when you think, hmm, yeah, this is, there, there's something more for these people. Wow. So Miss Barb and I were talking about this very thing yesterday because, um, wow, this, this is really good. Okay. So Holy Spirit to start because everything about Faith Freedom Life is based on me 
just showing up and saying yes. I can take credit for nothing, um, not even a little smidge. I just, I just can't. All I'm doing is showing up, and that's why being present is so important to me because um, as I show up and say yes, I'm looking at other people who are showing up and saying yes and who, who are committed and dedicated to their inner healing. Um, so that would be first and foremost, listening to Holy Spirit and then just paying attention. So, and I can speak on this with a person that I have in mind um, so committed to her cause, which is uh, being better, being the change that she wants to see um, for her family, being a Jesus girl. You know, I'm a Jesus girl. So being a Christ follower, being a Christ follower, being a Christ disciple, mm -hmm. um, and also um, knowing that she is trustworthy. Um, so that's so important, uh, knowing that uh, she's trustworthy and is just showing up and saying yes. So to me, those core components, what is your, where are you at in your relationship with uh, Christ? Um, and everybody isn't at different places. So it's not a, a judging thing, but just paying attention, you know, you know, a tree by the fruit of fruit it bears. That's what the word says. So just paying attention um, right. and uh, uh, being trustworthy and, mm -hmm. and being committed to, to the work for yourself and for people around you. Mm -hmm. That to me, that to me is the foundation of um, pulling somebody in and maybe nurturing their strengths. Yeah. Nurturing their strengths and uh, pulling those strengths out, identifying them and, and, and empowering them to operate in their strengths. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful, Michelle. Um, you know, how we show up, <laughs> is, right? It is really important. And are we working on our internal selves to show up better? Yeah right in every relationship and um, I heard somebody say once that you can only move at the speed of trust mm. in a relationship mm. and that's that's one of those little nuggets I've tapped in the back wait of my minute. head I have to put that down I heard, <laughs> I heard it wait a minute that's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is wait that a is, minute I, I have to type that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's a truth right there in any relationship. You can only move at the speed of trust. Um, so yeah, trust is incredibly important. Uh, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Barb, how about you as, as Michelle types that? Yeah, that's right. Well, I agree with everything she said at the very end about promoting their, their strengths. And, um, and they show you, you know, exactly who they are. I look at people's hearts. Mm. That's what I see when I see somebody. And so I can tell whether they are really into the ministry or they're just there because they thought it might be interesting, you know? Uh, yes. So, and how many do we have of those? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I started out with eight people and ended up with three mm -hmm. <laughs> for the last team that I took inside. So, you know, little by little, they realized that they weren't interested or didn't have what it took and because um, it takes maturity mm -hmm. it truly does and um, faith in God and every time I the first time we went into prison I said okay how are you feeling you know are mm -hmm. you nervous are you anxious you know um, because there's no reason for that you know we are protected when we go in and um they said, no, we're fine. You know, I said, okay. <laughs> and wow. it, it was wonderful. It was an amazing experience. And I hope that we can get back into it. I, I don't want to start in the winter, but I'd like to start in March sure. next year. Sure. So, mm -hmm. I love what you just said. I look at people's hearts and mm -hmm. Michelle, that's, that is Barb right there. Right. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. when you encounter Barb, you know your heart is going to be examined by her 
Yeah. <laughs> and and if you pass the test, yeah, you you I don't know about you, Michelle, but it's like I'm authenticated then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In some way. So um yeah, and it goes right. back to that that seeing that heart of that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a uh, discernment. Good discernment. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. Yeah. yes. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. All right. Um, I only have a few more and then uh, we can open it up uh, for just other discussion or questions. Um, Mich- this I think is really important is um, how do you promote if you how what advice would you give ministry leaders um, to promote resiliency in families? as they work with um, family members with an incarcerated loved one. What are some of the, some, some things we need to be paying attention to, you know, if we want to really help and engage in this work of healing and reconciliation and restoration with family mil- members and, and just that resiliency that is required for that to happen. Um, what, what advice would you give uh, ministry folks that want to be a part of that? Yeah. Um, and show up with a good heart. So, so I believe really it starts in um, securing your anchor. Mm. And so, for me, m- my anchor is is my faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, securing that anchor and going back to what fills you, what replenishes you what keeps you um, is my anchor and doing what I need to do on a daily basis, whether it be, um, whether it be going out for a walk so that I can admire nature, whether it be spending some time in worship or my word or listening to a book that inspires me. Um, I, I believe in therapy, so uh, talking with my therapist, uh, my spiritual director, or going to art therapy, um, those are just some of the personal things that I do, so securing that anchor um, and making sure that I keep, I pray this and ask God to help me to keep at the forefront of my mind that this none of this is about me. Mm. It's not about me. And it's about everybody that I encounter. It's about his people. Um, and also the, the last piece of that is everything that I just mentioned um, about the anchor has to do with my inner healing. So I'll be on that journey until the day of completion, until it's all said and done, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so as long as I keep that first, if I know how I see me, which is through God's eyes, my identity is secure, my anchor is secure, then that's going to keep me going in terms of serving other people. If I'm starting to feel fatigued, if I'm starting to feel overwhelmed or burned out, then I need to go back and check my anger. So that's the advice that I would give anybody in leadership. That is powerful. That is really powerful. Thank you for that. So Barb, you have led people um, within the church mm-hmm. kind of into some of this. So what advice would you give them in um, promoting family resiliency with perhaps members of their own congregation that are going through this experience? Well, I, first of all, I think would look to see what is unspoken because there's a lot that you can pick up from someone. Um, it's a detail that they don't want to speak about perhaps or whatever, but you can, you can get a feeling for that. And I know a lot of people can, can get that feeling too. So um, then I, what I would do if I had something, a situation, I would go to my mentor who is a staff member and um, talk it over in confidence, not saying who it was, because everything that happens within this ministry is private and um, sacred, you know? So uh, the other thing is just spreading love. 
you know, being there, being at their feet, letting them exchange, letting them pour out their hearts. And I'm not sure that I actually answered your question. <laughs> you did, you did, cool. you did. Yeah, because, because the point is you don't have to start a big ministry to do this. It's right, just right. about. And yeah. it's very important to have somebody in your corner, um, mm -hmm. a staff member in your corner to fight for you if you need to fight, um, whether it be fighting for a space to have the ministry, fighting for, um, events or whatever it's and I do have that and I am so happy that um I have that so yes. yeah that's you yes. really really it's important yes it is yes mm -hmm. yes and you're right you know staff um and, and pastors we work a lot with pastors with all in community and mm -hmm. and we tell them all the time we don't expect you to lead this we just expect mm -hmm. you to cheer it and be a mm -hmm. champion of it mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. the ministry work is really that one-on-one, -on -one, that that right at the first point of contact type stuff. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and just understanding it and letting pastors, the official leaders, right? The, because mm -hmm. pastors are known mm -hmm. as the official leader of right. the church. Um, but there's always space for for more leaders, for people that mm -hmm. are just have the heart, the relational heart to do this, to lead in that way. And so just, um, you know, we just give our pastors permission to say, look, you have this, this mm -hmm. experience is within your congregation. Now, how are you going to respond? I'm um, mm -hmm. not you personally, but your congregation, people that love each other should be responding yes. in some yeah. form or fashion. So, yeah, thank well, one, you. For one that. thing my pastor always said was if you, um, if you need to do something or feel the urge, God is going to provide um, your instructions and he's going to lead your way. Yeah. And uh, that is so true. Absolutely true. And yeah. I was going to say also that our church is in transition at the moment because a new pastor is coming in. So I'm a little bit on eggshells. Uh, my mentor is staying. So that's good. And um, I, I just want, I just pray that he is, um, for prison ministry, because I would love to increase what we do. I would mm. love to pull all kinds of people in. And I think we have a good handle on how we're going to start that. So That's just awesome. pray that we can make it work. Yes. 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 And God will make a way, right? As we remain yes. faithful to the mm -hmm. call. Um, he, we leave it upon him to provide the provisions for that. That's right. Mm -hmm. for us to happen so thank you well we could go on i ladies i could talk to you like all day mm -hmm. um, yeah. because <laughs> this is so rich and the, the wisdom that you share is so incredible um but i wanted to just uh, give um you know our other participants opportunities to ask questions to have just some discussion um with you before i ask for your final thoughts so do um do we have any and you can just unmute and, uh, and just ask a question or make a comment um, or just have a discussion at this time. Or use the chat. Or use the chat, could use mm -hmm. the chat too. Yep. <clears throat> so. Um, and if not, I'll just, um, just give a, another second or two. I don't know. Some people, my typing's horrible in those chat features. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know. I know. So, and I will say that both Michelle and Barb are going to be part of our Building Bridges community experience this year on October 14th through 16th. And uh, we're just so excited uh, to have you be part of that to a broader audience of folks all over the state. Um, to come together and, and create community around um, re-entry um, and the, the process of that of, of from re-entry because people re-enter all the time but do they reintegrate um, yeah. into the lives of their families into the life of their community in a positive way right so mm -hmm. um, so we're excited that you guys will be you ladies not guys you mm -hmm. ladies will be part of that that experience mm -hmm. and more information will be coming out about that so yeah. um, 
So I think ladies, you've given us so much to chew on. I think, you know, the, just writing it down and are processing it at this point. Um, <laughs> so any final thoughts from either one of you around leadership or around just being present and in ministry with a family members who have an incarcerated loved one at this time, any, any just insight, or, um, you know, even just a better understanding of what they might be going through. Um, I do. I, I don't want to climb over Michelle, but I think it's so important that we promote from within, that we watch for the signs of those in the group who've had the experience and, you know, give them more responsibility. Um, we, we have a support group and I, my plan, God tells me that is going to take off and we're going to have to have more than one group. So we need to have other facilitators. And um, so I think, and we have a few in the group that really would fill the bill. So, you know, we want to expand and grow and thrive yeah. and stay here for a long time. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Because it, this, um, this experience is not going away. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. On its yeah. own. Anytime soon. So that's right. Uh, Michelle, final thoughts? Yeah, so um, to piggyback off of what Ms. Barb said it is so important to, um, I think is really great to, is an opportunity to promote from within. Uh, one of the things that I pray often and, and let everybody know in support group is that, thank God, um, Romans 8, 28 is just real and alive that God won't, he will turn those bad experiences around for the good, for all who love him and are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. I, we're living that in real time. So to be able to share with other people that when we live a surrendered life to God, that nothing that we go through is in vain no experience is wasted so to be able to promote from within um, like i mentioned earlier to see people committed and dedicated to their cause of inner healing and growing um, and so that may sound really individualized but as far as focusing on themselves but i i just really believe that when we when we get what we need to heal and to grow and deal with all of our stuff, then we give them the opportunity to show up as our best selves for our family, which gives them a fighting chance as well. So that lends itself into mm. being the change that we want to see. So yes. um, that would be my final thought is be the change that you want to see not just for yourself, but for your family, for your circle of influence, because there is no way to expect something different from somebody else if you're not first doing it yourself. Wow. Yep. That's why you're the chief role model, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God done it. God done it. Got it. <laughs> Just had to bring it back around to that. <laughs> <laughs> so how can uh, people find out about Faith Fr Freedom Life? Tell us how, we, how, the, how folks can connect and learn more, um, mm -hmm. either as wanting you know, to be part of that community or to help um, in that community. So, Yeah, so uh, the website, uh, faithfreedomlife.org, all of the contact information is on their email, info at faithfreedomlife.org, um, and the telephone number that you see on the website is uh, my telephone number is my direct dial. Um, I don't have a separate number, so call me. My phone is on me all the time. Um, and I will connect you to whoever in the group uh, can meet your need, but um, I'm the initial point of contact and, and just like to build relationship with people. So we have support group um, bi-weekly. And next week, so we have it on Tuesdays and uh, Thursdays, alternating every other week. Starting next week on Thursday is gonna be our first in-person support group. Um, 
And we are on Tuesday still going to keep support group on Zoom. So to give people a choice. Um, and you can follow us on social media, Faith Freedom Life on Facebook and Instagram. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much for uh, spending this hour with us, being with us, providing us significant wisdom, not only around leadership, but just life and being mm -hmm. a disciple and that call to just um, the thing that comes to mind is just love your neighbor yeah. as yourself, yeah. right? You know, how do you love yourself? How do you show up in, with love of yourself? And then how, how do you show up in love with the neighbor? And I think for me, our whole discussion just hits both of those mm -hmm. like yes. crazy. So <laughs> yes. oh, can I mention one thing. Yes, we of course. We have an open house, um, a community meet and greet in Westwood on July 17th uh, in Miss Barb's um, church, Westwood United Methodist right. is hosting at my neighbor's place. So come out and see us so gracious enough to host us and have us uh, out there. So we are super, super excited about that. What time is that on July 17th, Michelle? Yeah, at July 17th at my neighbor's place at, uh, yeah, my neighbor's place at one o'clock from one to three. So we'll have food and, and giveaways and uh, just introduce the community to Faith Freedom Life and how we are uh, available to serve. Okay, that is so awesome. Um, and I will, after this, I will get information from you and send that out as well in an invitation. So, Ooh, okay, good. Because we really are interested in serving the community in this yeah. particular um, venue. And we would like any referrals, actually, if, if you know someone that needs it, by all means. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about you ladies so much. Well, thank you all for being here. I'm very excited. We are going to, uh, I can't wait to post this as a podcast uh, <laughs> for people to, to, to hear. And, uh, and then we'll send out some information about that invitation on July 17th. I got that in my brain right now. So it's okay, great. Um, so so all right. So thank mm -hmm. you for being here. Um, Michelle and Barb, thank you again for just sharing yourselves with us. Mm -hmm. Um, thank today. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you for yes. having Ms. Barb. Thank you, Ms. Barb. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs>